welcome back to Ed's Technical. Let's have a look at this lovely locomotive called Roco. Right, so welcome back. Um, I've just got my desk. I've got a bit of space to do this. Let's go ahead and move to We're going to do a thing. German, English, and French. So let's go to our trusty English page. So you can see that it's got some instructions on how to open it. Um, it suggests that the minimum radius of the train should be 358 millimeters. It also though says that um, it's recommended that you run the train for 30 minutes forward and backwards without those newly out of the box so that it runs optimally. I've already done that, um, but we can do some of the other steps of the train. Just pinch it here and put this offside. If you want it also in the box you can see that there are some further accessories which we'll just dish out um, such as we've got some ploughs some spare buffer things, um, which I'll show you a bit more from the moment. You've got a closer coupling, which is probably going to be slightly better uh, over some of the points. Um, but also just some detailing, which you might want to add. Um, but for me, at the moment, I'm okay. So just push that off the side of my table and whack the camera at the same time. Very professional here. So for the decoder installation, what I'm going to be using is simply just something which I can gently um, move the buffers off. So I'm going to turn the locomotive upside down um, and I'm just going to zoom in to this. Okay, so you can see here that we've got the buffers which are on the front of the, of the locomotive. And if we just gently remove them, and I've just got this sort of spudging tool here. I'm just gently applying a bit of pressure behind them, which then means they come off. And I'm just going to pry gently off the chassis. And you can see, unfortunately, I've taken one of these buffs off, um, but fortunately, we just um, find that again. We can uh, reassemble that nice and easily. Like that. And then we'll just repeat the same on the other side. Where we'll just sort of gently pry off that. Like there. And now you can see both those are off. So then if we put it on the table here, let's just zoom out. Um, if I just gently prise these sides apart, you can see the case comes off nice and easily. Now in the center here, we can see there's the DC blank plate. Um, and that's especially where we're gonna take that off. Um, and we're gonna put this DCC chip from Gage Master here, which I will just open with the uh, trusty spudger. If I can just uh, remove these fiddly screws, I mean staples. There we go. Very fiddly this packaging. Oh, uh, opens not how I was expecting. There's some documentation 
if you want a bit more information about that. Now, as you saw in my in my efforts of opening the ch chassis, you saw that on the bottom there was a plate here. Now, if you've got a large decoder, you can put that in there, um, which we will be doing. Um, it might not be strictly necessary for this decoder, as it's miniature, um, but that shouldn't matter. We'll then just route the six pin, eight, eight pin harness into the top. Make sure you've got a good connection there. Um, and again, we can just put that cover on. Hopefully better than uh, how I did it before. Um, just use that handy little tool, whatever it's called. I think it's a spudger. To just gently push in these connectors like so. And that's done. Um, it's probably advisable to keep this around just in case you want to sort of troubleshoot anything uh, that went wrong with the DCC chip just to make sure the locomotive functional. So I will put that in the bag of bits that it came with. But now that that's done, um, we can put the cover back on. There we go. Um, doesn't seem to have gone in nicely there. Let's just put it back in this. Oh, there we go. Um, and we'll just re reassemble <laughs> the, the, the tray like there. And we'll put this bit on here. Oh. Just one of the uh, the handy little removable buffers, um, and there we go. The locomotive is sorted. Let's get you some exciting shots of what this looks like on the rails and running round a track. Railway baseboard layout, and uh, here you can see we've got the lovely Roco locomotive with the Gauge Master decoder, fleshly fitted. And in order to get this to work with our setup, what we're going to do is we are going to have a CV program locomotive so that the Z21 can send the commands to the right locomotive. At the moment, the value is three, but we can change this, and this is really easy to do. You can open up the Z21 app. I'm using the new app here, it's got some marginal improvements over the old one. We're going to go to CV Programming, Program Track. This is isolated from the rest of the track, so I won't program some other locomotives by accident. Um, and at the top, you can see it says CV Address, and that's actually what you're going to be programming. And it's got some helpful hints here as to all the different things. What we'll do is we're going to put the value, um, we're going to read the CV here on the left, and you can see uh, it's got 51. Um, I've changed this, but you can again change it to something like 66. You can set that as the CV, and you can now see that that locomotive would respond to the command um, 66. I'll change that back again. There we go, that works nicely. So now what we need to do is we need to go into vehicles. We need to create a new one. These will just be default ones. So I've begun to create one here. We're going to name this as the BLS track. Of course it's active. Um, you can put speed display in kilometers an hour, regulation set on miles per hour, but we'll keep that in kilometers an hour. We can click on this and we can put uh, camera, 
um, and of course we can just pick it up okay. We can take a really great photograph of this. Oh yeah, snazzy photo. And just use that photo. Um, regulation speed step isn't necessary for us. Um, and if you really want to, you can fill that in. But on the functions menu, you'll see that we can. Um, we've got three pages of functions. We'll click on the first one. Um, it will be a switch. Put a symbol. I'll put this as the um, light. And I know that function zero is the one that holds this. And we can test this function by uh, turning it on and off. I'm sure you can see that changing something on the, uh, the locomotive here. Just hope no, that focuses. There okay, so we can uh, turn the lights on and off. How exciting! So now that we've done that, we can um, jump out of this. Um, we can go into the steering column. If we scroll along the bottom here, eventually you'll find that excellent photo which we took. We can turn the light on from the uh, dashboard on the left. Um, and now we can open the programming, uh, connect the programming track to the main track, and the locomotive will now respond to our commands. So now let's have some exciting shots of the train going around the railway lane. And now that we've got the CV programming completed, we are able to interact with the loco, loco at address 51. This locomotive has forward headlamps, which are accessible by function 0. If you were to map out the speed of how long it took each locomotive to do a loop of the specified track, or go between two points, you'd then be able to create a consist of two locomotives. And since I have another cargo locomotive, which also happens to be a Trax, which um, is here, this would work quite successfully. But that does require a bit more programming, um, which we'll do in another video. For the moment, let's get some exciting shots of the new train.